All right, so let's continue with another article, Sex versus Emotions. Quote, uh, many Arab men make a distinction between sex and emotional attachment. Bruce Dunn, author of an article titled Power and Sexuality in the Middle East, believes that sexual relations in the Middle East are about power. He writes, sexual relations in the Middle Eastern societies have historically articulated social hierarchies, that is, dominant and subordinate social positions, adult men on top, women, boys, and slaves below. Both dominant and subordinate, uh, subordinate and heterosexual, homosexual categorizations are structures of power. So, yeah, this is, this is the, basically the idea that, you know, it's not gay if you're the top. Well, this is, ju this is just a different way that culture has of repressing people. Uh, whereas here, any kind of intimacy between men is looked upon as gay and effeminizing uh, in the Arab world and in many other parts of the world. If you're the top, then it's not gay, you're not effeminate, and it's okay. Well, both are wrong. And both are unnecessary uh, kinds of... Uh, control. Let's see. Okay, so this is a kind of longer article. I did want to read it. Uh, it is Eroticism Among Kabul's Warriors. To the best of my knowledge, no gay Westerner had infiltrated gay Afghan life. I decided I would be the one to do this. I also found that homosexuality uh, came up easily in conversation, even with some government officials. An Afghan national who worked in a Western embassy but only wanted to be identified by his first name, Muhammad, gave me historical background on the topic. Certain Afghan tribes, he explained, especially the Uzbeks and Pashtuns, were, were known for male sexual behavior. The city with the greatest reputation for active homosexuality was Kandahar, the headquarters of the Taliban. Uh, also, a uh, fun fact about Kandahar, it's named after Alexander the Great, who also had male lovers, so how fitting. According to Muhammad, male couples were even holding wedding ceremonies after the Taliban arrived. The Taliban tried to control it, he explained, but it was so common in Kandahar, they were able to embrace it. Apparently, traditions of homoerotic behavior have come down from ancient times in Afghanistan. These customs carry on to this day, according to Muhammad. At rural weddings where dancer boys entertain male crowds wearing anklets that make music as they move. Uh, sometimes he explained they dress him like a woman. Many of the boys are available for sex. It was two parts, the dancing part and the sexual part, Muhammad said. Uh, the sexual part, no one will confess. Well, now, first of all, I'm assuming by boys they just mean uh, pubescent uh, adolescents or, you know, that sort. Um, but see, the, the part where they, the sexual part, no one will confess. I and mean, yesterday we talked about how relationships, you know, for, for in order to have a good relationships, you have to have honesty. And if you don't have honesty, you can't really have a close relationship because then you're going to be covering stuff up. And that kind of suppression is a recipe for disaster. And it's not a surprise to see. I mean, you look at Afghanistan, it's not exactly, uh, even if there's some... Uh, some same-sex sex going on in the back. It's not exactly a very progressive-sounding society, and you know that kind of uh, that kind of um, that kind of uh, you know impacts their relationship with women. You don't have honesty there either, so they suppress the they uh, oppress the women as well. Uh, Continue. These relationships seem to be widely known, even acknowledged implicitly, but they are far less uh, often discussed openly, and uh, and they are illegal. The sexual part is a problem, Muhammad said. The man and the boy can go to jail. Kandahar's reputation for homosexuality also came up in discussions with some young men I photographed in Kabul's uh, Babur Gardens pool. The comfort Afghan men would have with their body surprised me. Some willingly posed semi-nude in front of a foreigner's camera. The fall of the Taliban appears to have unleashed the cult of working out. At the pool, when I questioned the swimmers through my translator about the Taliban's notions about body image, several made a joke of the question, claiming that the old regime was made up of gay men. Kandahar playboys, as they called them, who loved to see naked men. Oh yeah, another thing about, uh, note over here, another thing about the lack of honesty and suppression. I, I remember an old Sopranos episode where all of the mobsters, as it turned out, were performing oral sex on their wives, but they were all ashamed of it, and it was this big secret that nobody else could know, even though everybody was in on it. Well, it's not surprised that people who are dishonest about little things like sex are going to be killing people, you know, in the back room. Um, let's see here. 
Yet even as Afghan men joked about the Taliban being gay, they did not seem terribly put off by the subject of homosexuality. Perhaps 20 men in all gathered and quickly realized I was gay based on my interest in the handsomest man. It proved to be no problem at all. Let's see, okay. Some of the older men pushed us together asking, you like homosex? They were so open, I was the one who was shocked. My most interesting peek into gay life happened much the same, much the way that it would in the West. On the street, a handsome young man held my stare, throwing glances back as he passed. He was a 21-year-old English teacher who I will call Munir. Sex had really not been on my mind when I embarked for Afghanistan, but I was attracted to Munir. His response to my interest struck me as very sophisticated. I knew what you wanted when you told me I was attractive. I am from Kabul, I know these things, he said, before adding that at 35 I was too old for him, Afghanistan being a society where few men live through their 40s. He suggested I meet his 26-year-old friend, uh, who I called Syed, who already had a 35-year-old boyfriend. This is Kabul, Munir said in an or urbane manner. Anything can be arranged. Munir said that he was only five minutes from my hotel, but the ride seemed to last forever. When we arrived, Munir was on the street with a few friends, including Syed. Uh, Munir led us up to the street to what he called his special room for men. There were eight men, most in their 20s and 30s, sprawled on cushions. The men who had gathered together were a masculine bunch. Munir's brother, who I'd, I'll call Abdul, was a military martial arts teacher, Syed an auto mechanic, and several were bodybuilders. So, uh, just, just as a quick little editorial note, uh, again, lots of masculine men congregating uh, together. Uh, you know, I think I, I'd have I'd have more of a chance of meeting Greros in fucking Afghanistan than than in this country. But anyways, uh, virtually all of them uh, fought against the Taliban. They proudly showed me photos from the army, including one showing Abdul parachuting out of a helicopter. Each man waited expectantly as they showed me pictures, searching intensely for my reaction. It was as if each wanted to prove his bravery, and with each photo, I felt as if I was being, uh, if I were being wooed. Courage against the Taliban seemed to be an ero seemed to be their erotic calling card. They were also clearly interested in talking about sex. One young man asked about English slang words and offered the tip that the Afghan word milk also meant masturbation. This man was 20, married with children. I asked him how, in a traditionally Islamic country, he knew such things. Finally, the young man said. When we meet a man who does not have a wife and does not have a girlfriend, we call him a sissy. What is another word for that in English? One of the men I'll call Ali, a brutally handsome man with wildly wavy hair, then pull, puts his arm around me and nudges closer. He played with the muscles of my arms, comparing them to his own, his other hand rubbing his crotch. That was the 20-year-old man's... Uh, then, uh, that was when the 20-year-old man simply blurted out, Munir said you like to do homosexual things. Which, which really has to be the pickup line of the century. Uh, Munir said you like to do homosexual things. <laughs> oh, hilarious. I asked once again how they could be open about such things in Afghanistan when it seemed so conservative, at least to outsiders. One young man chimed in, not under the Taliban, but Afghanistan is a democracy now. We can talk about anything we want. If you stay here, you are sure to have a ball, he said. Two days later, confident that my doubts uh, during my first visit were merely the jitters, I returned to Munir's house to a smaller gathering. Just him, his brother Abdul, Ali, Syed, and the fifth man. The men had planned a massage party with Ali and Abdul vying for me. Munir continually dared me to kiss his brother, but each time Abdul pulled away at the last minute, laughing. To make me look Afghan, they put a wrap around on my head, and we all danced. They wanted us to dance with their guns, but in spite of what interesting photos they could have produced, I declined. As the night progressed, I was comfortable enough to stay over, and Ollie and I slept in each other's arms after caressing each other for hours. I don't think I'll forget those nights in Munir's house, but it provided, I think, only a hint at what homosocial and homosexual behavior means in Afghanistan. Afghan men have lived through hardship, killed for their country to free it from the Taliban, and treat guns like fashion accessories. But strict Islamic rule means they've probably never seen a woman naked. Homosexual behavior might simply be a replacement for physical intimacy they cannot get otherwise in their lives, a workaround. Ah, uh, well, 
you know, it's 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 a shame we once again ruin a perfectly fine article with uh, situational homosexuality. You know, like is it re like is it really this difficult to find whores in Kabul? Really? You know, it's it's. <sighs> Uh, still, I seem to have encountered a society that, that accepts affection between men as a wonderful thing. I am eager for my return to the country and my chance to experience Kandahar, too. I can only wonder for what now I'll find. So, yeah, anyways, that's that. If you have any comments, leave them below or see the forum. Thank you very much.